Okay, let's uh, let's just pray. Father, we we just want to thank you, Lord, for this uh, for this day, for this time. Lord, we want to thank you for your presence in our lives, Lord. We thank you for uh, Lord everything that you've been doing, everything that you've been preparing us for. Uh, we thank you, Lord, every every small thing, Lord, that you, um, you bring in, everything that you remove out of our lives, Lord. We thank you for this. Uh, um, or for this preparation that is happening, God, and uh, sometimes we don't even realize it, Lord, but there's a, there's a great preparation that is happening. And even as we see in 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18, God, even as we, Lord, look upon your glory, Lord, even as we gaze upon your glory, behold your glory, God, uh, as in a mirror, Father God, uh, the glory of Christ, we are being transformed to that same likeness uh, by the Spirit of the, uh, by the by your Holy Spirit. And Father, we thank you that as we study, as we um, gaze upon your glory, as we, um, Lord, um, just wait in your presence, Father God, as we keenly study, investigate, examine your word, observe your word, Father God, we know that we are being transformed, we are being changed. And we thank you for the drastic change that you bring about, Lord. And uh, Father God, we thank you for the things that are that are dropping off like that fruit, oh God. Um, even as, uh, God, that we draw from the life of your river, God, even as we are rooted by the river, and uh, may our roots go down deep, Lord, drawing life, Father God, and everything that is um, that is off death, everything that is off darkness, everything that is of the enemy, oh God, I pray will be purged out, um, that will be cleansed, oh God, and prepared, oh God, as, as a bride, Lord, a blemishless, blameless, oh God, uh, without spot or wrinkle, Father God. Yes, Master, may our lives, Lord, um, God, be pleasing to you, God. We thank you, Father God, we thank you. It's time we just commit ourselves into your mighty hands. I commit this, this session into your mighty hands. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, right. A, a quick uh, review of uh, uh, Felix's uh, sermon, The Dew of Heaven. So Felix, very, 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 very interesting, very different uh, message. Always, uh, like I was sharing, we always heard about the rain but uh, you know this was very different and about the dew and and some of the facts that you brought out you know the the, the distinct uh, the distinction or the differences between the rain what the rain does what the dew does um, you know very very uh, uh, very nice very uh, uh, very insightful um, uh, I I was just looking at the expectation of uh, you know, of the message, you know, what you wanted to share. And I just uh, putting it here to help believers appreciate how God provides timely solutions to sustain his people um, in times of uh, diversity. So since you had, a, you know, a lot to share, I just felt that maybe, you know, you were uh, kind of asking some of us to read the scriptures. Um, and, um, you know, in a short time frame, it's it's best not to do that. It's best if you just go ahead and read the word, read the scripture, have it ready, so you know you can just move on. So you'll have time to, you know, to do the main thing, right? Especially work towards this objective uh, or this expectation that you know you had for the message. So, um, so I think we spent a lot of time looking at, you know, it was all very nice and uh, very insightful and uh, quite an eye opener for you know the work of god in these ways um uh, but i'm just uh, you know uh, sharing these so that um the time you know you can pace yourself well uh, within those 12 minutes in order to um, you know maybe maybe you can even say okay i'm not going to share these facts i'm going to share only this these important things i'm just going to hit upon this and you know uh, uh, i am going to journey through this the, this conclusion you know, i think that um, that would have uh, uh, that would have been even more effective right right so i just wanted to share that felix yeah okay um okay so we'll move on to uh, our next uh, three speakers for today um there's uh, first we have abhishek mitra is abhishek in the class abhishek uh, no Okay, Abhishek is not here. So, 
probably we can have uh, Subhajit and uh, after Subhajit, we'll have Charles uh, share the word. So, um, yeah, Subhajit, over to you. Uh, you have a presentation. You can go ahead. Uh, no, Pastor. I'll, I'll, I'll only speak. Yeah. You. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I forgot to make a presentation. So I have notes in my hand. So yeah, it's okay. Yeah. No worries. No problem at all. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Pastor, for this opportunity. Uh, my topic uh, is the voice of his word. Uh, uh, when we are asked about this, uh, what uh, about this uh, session, about this assignment, uh, the first thing came to my mind was the voice of his word, because this is something I have practiced for years and years and years in my personal life. And uh, to be very honest, it's more real to me than the, than the uh, clothes I'm wearing. It's so real to me that I can deny myself, but not the voice of his word. So what do you mean by the voice of his word? If you look uh, at Psalm 103 and verse 20, I'll, I'll read it for us. Psalm 103 and verse 20. Yeah. So here we can see it's written. Uh, Bless the Lord, O you, you his angels who excel in strength, who do his word heeding the voice of his word. So uh, my primary focus is to uh, is to focus on this word. The last line says, heeding the voice of his word. So the angels of God, uh, they excel in strength by doing his word. But what they hear, they hear the voice of his word. If you look at the Hebrew word for this word voice, it says kole, K-O-L-E, kole. It means to call aloud, a voice or sound or a proclamation. So uh, these words uh, occurs five zero six times in the KJV version. So uh, if we uh, if we focus on this word, it it doesn't it it not only says the word of God, it says the voice of His word. We know whatever we read from the word, this is the logos, this is the logos, that is the written word. But what we need to hear is the voice of His word, the 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 logos manifesting itself to us, the logos becoming living to us. So we'll dive into that and we'll try to understand today how important it is and how we can hear the voice of his word. We all read the word of God, but the word of God must speak to us audibly for us to have inside revelation and go after it and accomplish God's given purpose. Hallelujah. So uh, if you read about uh, from Genesis uh, chapter 3 verse 8 to 10 and also verse 17, I'll not read these scriptures, but we can read later. Here we, here we see in Genesis chapter 3 that Adam heeded the voice of his wife, that is Eve. And, you, and we know uh, it led to a, a, a tragedy. And uh, also we have uh, read in the account of Abraham that Abraham heeded the voice of his wife also. And it also led into, uh, it also led into a, a different kind of tragedy. And that's why the contention is still there. Uh, but you see... There, there are some people uh, whom we have read in the Bible who heeded the voice of the Lord and they became a lot more successful in what they did. So uh, the voice word, we have uh, heard it in Hebrew. It's called kole. That means proclamation, call aloud, noise, a loud so sound. Uh, if you see at John chapter 10, verse 1 to 5, we find the same word voice there. In Greek, it's called phone. So it also means a sound. The voice of the uttered word, something that has been uttered, that has been said, and we hear it. So, you know, uh, if you read uh, Romans chapter uh, 10 and verse 17, faith comes to hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that word is the, uh, it's, it's in Greek, it's called rhema. So what happens when we read the written word of God, the written word of God logos when it becomes rhema. And when we, when we hear the rhema in our heart uh, audibly, spiritual heart what it becomes it, it, it is what, what we are hearing we're hearing actually the voice of his word we're hearing the phone the kole and and that that uh, the voice of that uttered word brings faith into your heart and that moves mountains so uh uh as i mentioned the uh, that we need to hear the voice of his word this has been my practice from the very beginning of my life i came to know christ uh, in the day when my father was in his deathbed, he died and my family members uh, came to our home and my mother, my sister were blaming me because I came to know because I believed in Jesus. And, and they said I, uh, my father died because I believed in Jesus because we, we came from a Hindi background. So they have such kind of 
uh, mentality they were now they're in christ praise god so so that was the thing but i still remember i didn't know christ uh, to that extent i only knew he died for me uh, the day I, I should have rejected him i know i didn't know what happened a, a, a peace came into my heart and i took two step backward uh, in my room i still had the, uh, we used to have a red sofa and i said in my heart out of the there was a lot of noise chaos a lot of people came to the house because our father died i was only 17 years old then i took two step backward i still remember i said in my heart lord from today i reject all these idols i accept you as my lord and savior i tell you i couldn't shed a single drop from my from my eyes i remember i, I knew that day i felt like i belong to god yeah so that was my experience because i heard the voice of his word the voice that compelled me the love that compelled me to accept jesus christ and later on uh, as, as we go uh, into the word of god we see in john chapter 27 jesus said that my ship uh, we will read that verse john chapter 10 and verse 27 yeah i'll read it for us it says that uh, my ship hear my voice and i know them and they follow me so the mark of a ship is that they hear the voice of his word see it's it's interesting to note that the word used here is voice so it says that the mark of a ship is that he knows and hears the voice of a shepherd we need to understand the voice of the word spoken by god himself yeah we need to understand the voice we need to understand the the logos must become rema in our life so according to uh, according to this verse in, in the world, we need to hear Jesus' voice. We have a lot of voice in this present world. We hear the voice of media. We hear the voice of politicians, the teachers, the deceivers. There are a lot of voice. We even hear the voice of our fellow believers who may speak negative things into our life. But we need to hear the voice of his word. Our primary focus in life must be that every morning I must hear the voice of his word. Whenever I, I share with my people, you know, God spoke this to me and I need to do that. Many believers, they criticize me. They say, this can't happen. But I tell you, from the year 2014, I've been practicing two things. The presence of his, the presence of the Lord and the voice of his word. And I tell you, every morning, because it has been a long time, every morning when I sit to pray, I, I have always had this expectation, this great expectation in my heart that God will speak. That God will speak and he has never failed me. He's such a faithful God. Yeah, uh, whenever I walk in the road alone, I always think like uh, this word comes to my mind when I think about God. What a mighty God we serve. Because he speaks. He's a living God. The logos becomes rhema in our life every day if we seek his word. Jesus has said, ask, seek and knock. So we got to seek the word of God. We got to seek. We got to dive into the word and seek to hear the voice of his word. Hallelujah. So uh, uh, my last point should be, how can we hear God's voice? We can hear God's voice through various medium, but I, I tell you, uh, we have seen in the Bible that God, the previous generation, God spoke to prophets because there was not fivefold ministry up there, uh, up then, but God spoke to prophets. God uh, spoke to, uh, in the New Testament, we see God speaking to various people. So it, if, it, if it can happen in the Old Testament, if it can happen in the first century, this can happen now even. We, we always think some people have gifts and that's why they hear the voice of God. But you see, we have our fathers, our mothers, our friends, our family. We hear the voice every day. Isn't God our heavenly father? Is, is, is not God our Lord? Will not our Lord speak to us if we allow him to, if we believe that he speaks? So the first thing we must do in our life is to believe that, yes, God speaks. God speaks to our heart. And and uh, the in my home, what I do at night time, I, I go into my balcony, I switch off every light and I meditate in his word. I think about his word. I, I walk back and forth, back and forth. And I think about his word, that what this could mean and what could that mean. And I simply talk to God. And I say, uh, I tell you, at that very place, in that balcony, I receive various revelations, insights. I simply go, write them down. And by God's grace, I'm allowed to lead a small house church of 12 people. So my sermons come from that place. And I go, I write them down, I preach in that place. So. So I, uh, I just want to encourage all of you to please practice hearing the voice of God. God speaks and God wants to speak to uh, into all of our lives. If we, if we begin to hear God's voice, confusion will go away. The enemy, 
will not be able to inject his voice into our lives the moment you begin to hear god's voice the moment you begin to hear what the lord wants to say to you in that particular situation even this uh, circumstances become negative your mother speaks negative even your family blames at you you will know i have heard from god nothing can move me and that's why jesus is in the book of mark if you do not doubt but have faith in your heart you will say to the mountain go and it will uh, go to this uh, be drowned in the sea and it will be done for you so why this is not happening in our life because the logos is not becoming rema in our life we are not hearing the voice of his word the moment we become the voice of his word this logos will become become rema into our life and this will move mountains for life god and our lives will be changed so i pray and i i encourage every one of you see i i i pick this topic because i cannot deny this that he speaks it's so real to me it's more real than even even my family members even that i'm alive because god speaks you know and i i have this habit like uh, i i come to god every morning i worship him and as samuel said as i said to god i say to god lord here i am here i am your servant speak o oh master and i simply wait in his presence i tell you miraculously he'll speak to you he'll show you visions i have a habit when i see vision i say god you have shown me vision but i need a proof of this from the word of god and he, he is such a faithful lord so so uh, yeah that was my message i encourage you please go ahead and please practice to hear the voice of his word thank you thank you all of you god bless amen thank you subhajit um, thank thanks you, for Pastor. that uh, thank you for that encouragement for that exhortation um yeah so uh, so blessed so real uh, wonderful so um that introduction about the voice of his word and then also you know going into the details of uh, you know what is the voice of his word um that was really very really good and then explaining from the greek and the hebrew about the voice and um, yeah and and also those uh, biblical examples as well as uh, you know real life examples of uh, uh, hearing the voice you know what you quoted from genesis uh, uh, adam hearing the voice and uh, the wrong voice uh, and then abraham also and the consequences of that but the consequences of listening to the other voice of the spirit uh, wonderful and of course your personal testimony and also um, the personal practices i think that that was very very uh, useful for all of us um and uh, i didn't know that you were uh, leading a home church <laughs> got to know today uh, though we interact almost every day <laughs> yeah um that was good and um and also um yeah it was um, so the what uh, was explained very clearly uh, Uh, and also you know the the whole thing the fact that it's a reality i think uh, so passionately uh, you know um, shared uh, the that is voice is uh, is so real that god speaks and uh, can go with expectation um, so you you shared one the thing right how do i hear uh, she said first first step is you know to believe uh, to which means to put away all those notions that god cannot speak or i'm not worthy of hearing his voice to put that away um so uh, was there anything else i was actually looking for you know some the how um you you still had about two more minutes i think so anything more uh, that you wanted to share that you Uh, so the first thing is uh, the first thing is simply to uh, believe that god speaks and the second mm. thing is to practice in his presence i mean to stay in his presence and and ask him to speak to us and also also to meditate in his word because when we meditate in his word uh, like a uh, uh, like like when we stay in his word and continue uh, with that passage or or mm. the context uh, god will give us revelation and and, and his uh. revelation is the voice yeah right right so i think you yeah, you shared that bit as a um, as your personal practice right yeah uh, yeah yeah so if if you um, kind of um, um, you know uh, make it very clear you know very very clear articulate that very clear saying okay first of all you know believe expectation okay so this is what you do and secondly you know stay in his presence this is what i do and third meditate in his word and this is what i do whatever i hear whatever i encounter supernaturally I go back to the word and check it out so you know if you put it that way uh, that would have been uh, even more effective but uh, yeah uh, really enjoyed thank you thank you subhajit any any other uh, you know if anyone else wants to share something that's fine i just see the comments here uh very fine 
Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, is this uh, anyone wants to ask anything? Um, any questions that you might have, you can also do that, and the Subhajit will answer. Um, okay. If not. Uh, I think we'll we'll go on to um, is um, Abhishek here. Okay, how do you get to know God's will? Um, Subhajit Anita has. Um, okay. Has a question. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so for example, uh, uh, I can choose one example. Like uh, after completing my. Uh, uh, master's degree i i had a urge to go for it i'm just giving an example yeah from practical life so so i i, I had a desire to go for it but uh, so i started uh, giving interviews and all that but i knew god had a call for my life and uh, i always felt that in my heart so what i do when i when i need to know god's will for a specific reason i go for fasting so i fast and i wait at god's feet and and i'll i'll, I'll not let god, god go until he speaks and i'll not leave my room until he speaks so that's that's what uh, i'm kind of adamant <laughs> yeah but but i tell you like jacob wrestled with god that's when he had an encounter with god so we, we gotta wrestle we gotta give our time and this pleases the heart of the master and he speaks out of his love and when he speaks doubt vanishes uh, so Sometimes when he speaks, things are very tough, but that's that's how we we can know God's will. It's completely biblical. It's completely biblical because waiting is something that that we have seen uh, previously. Uh, the the prophets used to do. They used to wait at God's feet, and and we know the Bible says Jesus is same yesterday, today, and forever. So that Jesus is still the same today. So if you wait, this delights the heart of the Master because Jesus says God has said in His Word in the Book of Psalms. Delight in the Lord, and He shall give the desires of your heart. So, so when we wait, wait in His presence, we, we are giving Him our best, our, our time, or everything. It delights the Master, and the Master speaks. So that's how I, I I get to know His will, and I try to follow every time. Sometimes I fail. Yeah. Thank you, Subhid. All right. Uh, anyone else uh, that you want to share? Okay. Okay, so um, is Abhishek Mitra in class? No, not yet. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll move on to the next person who is Charles. So Charles, um, you can go ahead and share. Is Charles here? Okay, yeah, Charles, you are here. Uh, go ahead, Charles, you can share. I think it's muted. You, if you can unmute your mic. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, this wonderful morning, I have uh, things here with me. I don't know that you can see them. I have these two, but also I have another one. It's having some smaller fruits on it. Uh, if you can see closely, uh, these are fruits that are on this branch and also these are also mangoes which are on this branch but also i have also another fruit um another fruit this type so you observe this is um um a tomato this is these are mangoes and these are eggplants but i want to tell you that all these fruits are on branches and these fruits are coming from a plant. And let me tell you, botanically, a fruit is a freshly or dry ripened ovary of a frying plant enclosing the seed or seeds, apricots, bananas and grapes, as well as bean pods, corns and grains, all are technically fruits. For a fruit to form, it must be an ovary containing ovules, which later develop into seeds after fertilization. So each person is an ovule, and what fertilizes this ovule, the fertilizing agent is 
the devil, then what comes out or what the fruit will be will be that one of the devil. But if it has been fertilized by the Holy Spirit, then that person will be producing the fruit of the Spirit. So when the ovaries are not fertilized, then the fruit is not complete. The first time fruit is mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, where it says, and each tree would bear fruit, and each fruit would bear seed. So fruits form on branches of trees, but for grasses, they form on nodes like maize cobs and any other, even wheat and millet. So for grasses and grains, each cob head contains multiple fruits or can have so many things. But for us as human beings, we were made and we were having the seed. And this seed is the word of God. So when the seed in you, which is the word of God, is doing the fertilization, that means you are going to bear fruit. That means you will be able to bear fruit. So each fruit usually produces a fruit of its kind. You will never find a mango producing maize. Therefore, the fruit you are, you are what you are, and God has given you that type of fruit so that you will bear what you have been designed to do. So God has made you in that way so that you will be able to bear the fruit that he has given you. So friends, if you are here and you have already believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, God wants you to bear the fruit. And how did you become, uh, become the, uh, a bearing fruit? Or how did that fruit begin? Or when did it begin to grow? When you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal friend and savior, how did it come? The Bible tells us from the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, I'm going to read from this Bible, that even when you were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ, for by grace you are saved. The word quickened means to bring life again, to make life again. So Jesus quickened you, God made you. So that's when you are fruit began to grow. That's when you were expected to bear fruit because you were dead far away, but you have been brought into Christ, and that's when the fruit begins. So for you who are already believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are already bearing fruit. You are already bearing fruit. Yes, in the same chapter, chapter 2, verse 13, says that we are far away, but we have been made near by the blood of Christ. And verse 19 says that you are no longer a stranger, no longer a foreigner, but a fellow citizen with the saints. So you are set to bear fruit. You have been grafted into the parent plant to bear fruit. So when you accepted Christ, the seed in you germinated, grew, flowered, and fruit bearing began. So what helps the fruits to grow? So for the fruit to continue to grow, you will observe that these, these fruits are still young. Do you think they will continue to grow now that they are not connected? Exactly. The Bible tells us from the book of John, chapter 15, verse 2b. Okay, I will begin from verse 4. Uh, John chapter 15, verse... Uh, <clears throat> Sorry. Then chapter 15, verse 4, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So for the fruit to continue to grow, you must remain attached. You must remain attached to the vine, who is Jesus Christ. So that's the deal. You must remain attached and bear fruit. But also, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 18b, Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 18b, this is what the Bible says. 
uh, it says, be filled with the Spirit. So you are called to be filled with the Spirit. When you are filled with the Spirit, you are able to reign with what the Spirit wants and you are able to produce the fruit. So if you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, that means you have not yet begun bearing fruit. You need first to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and that seed of the gospel is put in you and then you will be able to bear fruit. The Bible tells us from the book of John chapter 3, verse 36, that those who have believed on the Lord shall see life. And those who have not yet believed on the Lord will never see life, but the wrath of God is on them. So for you to be, to be able to bear fruit, you first need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Now, especially for those that have already believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what could be hinder your fruit to grow? Could the fruit be stunted or unhealthy? Yes. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, uh, this is what it says, chapter 5, verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So for the, for the fruit to continue to grow well, you must to walk as wise. So when you are filled with the spirit, then you are able to walk as will not be hindered. Again, values of the world to be drunk with a lot of things that takes away and makes the Holy Spirit to be uh, lowered down. So that's exactly what can hinder the fruit when you are walking as a fool, when you are not using the power of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, or when you are drunk with the worries of the world. So you should abide, remain attached to the parent plant, the Father. So be filled with the Holy Spirit. So which, filled, which spirit are you bearing? Are you bearing the fruit of that lasts? If you are you have been given the, the seed of God in you, you are expected to bear fruit. And when you bear fruit, that fruit must last, must continue to reproduce so that you are able to continue to bear fruit for others. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, 23, a lot of uh, spiritual uh, fruit that comes out of the person that has already believed on the Lord Jesus Christ says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Again, it's such there is no law. So, are you set to bear the fruit that is in you? God has released his word in you, the seed, and you are set to bear the fruit. Because when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he gave you the power to bear fruit. When you abide in him, he will abide in you and will bear fruit. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. We, we all enjoyed that message. Um, and uh, thank you for bringing those fruits. Uh, are these from your garden or you bought them? Or Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I have a backyard and I have a mom, two mango trees and I love wow. fruits. Oh, wonderful. wonderful. So this is your backyard. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I think Sam was saying he was feeling hungry looking at those fruits. <laughs> um, yeah, very nice. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I think you took us right through, um, you know, the the... Um, the fact that we are designed to bear fruit, I think you started with that, and uh, and the fact that um, uh, you know when does it start, um, and what we should do, um, what we what we need to do, um, of course, um, in the natural, the uh, you know uh, it is just expected uh, that you know as long as uh, the plant is not uprooted as long as the fruit is not plucked. You know, things happen in the natural. Uh, 
Uh, but in the spiritual, of course, as we are living stones and as we are people who have a will, I mean, I have a will and the power of choice, we need to do something which means we need to remain attached, receive, be filled with the spirit and so on. Yeah, it is nice when you, when you shared about the quality of the fruit, right? Um, that it needs to be healthy, it needs to continue to grow and uh, be uh, not be stunted and so on. So, um, and also uh, to be filled with the spirit, to remain attached to the uh, to the wine. Uh, yeah. Um, thank you, thank you, Charles. So that was good. Um, you still had time, you know. Uh, maybe you know because. Uh, uh, there were some who, who could not finish. Maybe we wanted to, you know, uh, kind of uh, finish it within time. You you had about I think three more minutes to go. So um, yeah, you still had time. You could um, you know kind of relax and maybe put a timer in front and then talk. So um, that's that's good. Um, Charles, what I I felt was that you know uh, if you could bring out some. Um, examples uh, maybe from you know whatever you know from some practical examples from your life or it could be from anyone uh, any the life of a believer and uh, really talk about okay uh, now well the bible gives this phraseology or this um, you know this phrase bearing fruit so for a believer you know what would it uh, what would it mean Know, when when it comes to bear fruit, is it to uh, live a life that's successful? Is it to live a life that um, you know uh, that uh, personifies Christ? You know more Christ likeness. Uh, you know something on those lines, and uh, and the fact that uh, you know when I when I'm not in the presence or when I'm not connected actively, you know drawing from the vine or when I'm not actively being filled with the Spirit and so that results in my life being lived a certain, you know, other way. So if you could spell that out, uh, I think it will be uh, even more uh, effective. You know, for a Christian audience, yeah, yeah, it definitely makes sense, yeah, bearing fruit. But also if you could uh, kind of clarify, hey, what, this is what bearing fruit means, you know, as a, maybe as a, you know, a, a, as a working professional or as a minister of God or as a student or, you know, maybe a, uh, maybe you're a, you know, you're a, as a husband, as a wife and, uh, you know, um, so this is what bearing fruit means. So uh, I think that, that would have, uh, that would also help greatly. Yeah. Uh, any other uh, thoughts? Um, so, uh, so Charles, why did you choose bearing fruit? Um, why did you choose this topic? If you could just share that with us. And uh, how did you go about putting together the message? Um, um, yeah. Can I, can I say? Yeah, sure, sure. Go I, ahead. I chose, I, I chose this, this topic because um, I knew how I was before I I met the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, in fact, one of the life example I wanted to give was uh, the one of the reasons as to why I it skipped me. Uh, my laptop could not work, so uh, for the laptop I would be seeing the timer. So I switched to, to the phone, and uh, when I switched to the phone, uh, to put it in front so that I would get the, the video well, then the, the, the time could not be seen well. So that's why I, I, I did not use the three minutes. But one of the, the examples of my life was I like uh, bearing fruit. I like uh, I went to a shop and I ordered things, and then I told the person to write down the things that uh, I have ordered and the money. And uh, after some few minutes, I remembered that I needed to cancel some and uh, increase others. And this person maintained the money that had been set. But the money was more. So I took the material. After two days, I checked on the paper. I found that 
I still had to pay more money. So I went and I talked to the person and I said, come on, it's like you, you, you asked for less money. And he said, really? I said, now you calculate again. So they calculate, we calculated, and the money was more. And the, the phone, this one was really a fruit of the spirit because I would have said it's okay. That was their mistake. So that was the life example I wanted to give that the Holy Spirit would, would encourage you, would convict you that if you don't do this good thing, then you have done wrong. Uh, the reason as to why I had uh, selected this is the fact that I remember how I was before I met Jesus Christ and what has happened in my life and how God has used me. Uh, because um, the wife of the pastor where I attended the church after I believed the Lord Jesus Christ said that the Lord is going to use you much more that was in 2008, and today I am reaching thousands, thousands through different media. So the fruit of the spirit that was the seed that was put in me has grown uh, a lot, and that's why I chose this. And then bringing it together, uh, I used it the natural way, uh, as you would do, you would observe the way I did the, the questioning was like when the fruit expected to grow, uh, what helps the fruit to grow, and then uh, um, what would be that the fruit to grow, and then uh, baron of which fruit are you bearing? So I was looking at the knowing component, the fearing component, but also the doing component. What should they do? the listener. So that's how I handled it. I was looking at the knowing that he was, what is the fruit, what are all fruits and all those, and connect them to the, the vine and the, the, the branches. And then the, the feeling component that they need to know that the, they are, the time they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that's when they begin fruiting. And then the doing component, is now uh, to know that they cannot be stunted, they need to remain uh, bound to the, to the vine. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you so much. So blessed to hear that. Very um, encouraged to hear that as well. Yeah, wonderful. Um, yeah, I just want to, uh, yeah, uh, you know, really bless you guys, Subhajit, Charles. Thank you so much. Um, you continue to minister. Um, I, I have a question. Do you have a matoke? Is that a kind of fruit, Kennedy? Uh, Kennedy's put a question. Uh, matoke, matoke is another name for banana. Oh, banana. So, okay. yeah, so I have a lot, and it is our staple food here. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, thank you so much. I think, um, yeah, since Abhijit is not here, we, we will we'll stop, we'll stop here. And um, I just put here the speakers for the next class, which is on Monday. So, Praisey, Abraham. Abraham is uh, not here. Anita is here. So, if you can just remind Praisey and uh, Abraham today. Oh, Abraham's here. Okay. Um, uh, so, Maybe you can just remind Prezi on the group that uh, next class, you know, it's a turn to present, right? Okay. Okay. So I guess we'll stop here. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we're all learning something and different perspectives and, uh, you know, different pres presentations. And uh, we're, we're learning something about your life as well. The fact that uh, you know, Charles has a backyard, very nice garden with fruits and uh, something about Subhajit's life and testimony. And uh, yeah, so um, that is something that we're learning as each person is presenting. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. God bless you guys. Have a great weekend. We'll uh, get back on Monday. Okay. All right. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor. Right. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor.
थैंक यू सुबजीत